Okay. Where is it? Right there. Oh my goodness. Can I get out? I don't know. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I thought you said a three. Oh my oh. goodness! Dude, this is nuts. Where is it? I don't know. Where do you go now? He's, he might jump over to our backyard. Nope. Oh my gosh, a deer! Oh my god, he just jumped over that fence. Where is it? He jumped over our oh, fence? No, he jumped over that fence. Look. Where? No, he's over in the other berry's yard. Clears. He's in. So, those fences in those backyards, easily like six or seven feet tall. And that deer was jumping it with, with pretty much ease, right? Um, so if you're going to install fencing to keep deer out of your yard, it is recommended that you do fencing that's at least 9 to 10 feet tall, which is crazy because that's a huge fence. And there was another video that I thought of showing, but it didn't show any, it didn't show it very well, but it was a guy at a tree farm that they had installed fencing to keep deer out of, but the deer had dug a hole underneath the fence. So um, installing fencing is something you can do, but honestly, it's not foolproof because, I mean, deers can, they can jump extremely high. And so it's, I mean, maybe if you do like a, a, a 15 foot fence, <laughs> but that's pretty silly because fences are expensive, can be very expensive. And so it's, it's hard to be able to install fencing that's high enough to be able to protect your whole landscape. So maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, having a fence around just your garden area, maybe something that's a little bit more um, reasonable with fencing. Um, adding tree protectors. So this is something that's really important, especially with new trees. Um, so the very first picture you saw the, the deer that was rubbing its antlers against the tree they do that to get the fuzz off um, and they'll do that with any tree that they can fit their antlers like into and then the tree goes in the middle of their antlers and then they can rub the the fuzz off so especially with your new trees you want to make sure that you're either putting fencing around or if you just put the the stakes like the metal stakes around it you just want to make sure that you're putting them um, in a way that the deer can't get their antlers around that tree. Um, so adding tree protectors is something that's that's pretty important. And doing this will discourage the deer from coming into your yard because when, when they find the smaller trees, those are the trees they like to use so they can get the, the fuzz off. So that's why this is one way that you can um, prevent those deer from coming. Adding shrub protectors is something that's important, especially with your plants that the deers really like to eat. Um, this will discourage them from, from eating them, from getting, getting to them. And then they'll, um, be less likely to come back to your yard if, if this is not available for them to eat. And there's different ways that you can do those. There's really fancy strip protectors like this one that zips up. Um, or you can just do the burlap. There's like big burlap sheets or there's just like the the ribbon -y type of burlap. My dad uses the ribbon one on his arborvitas. Um, and actually it has helped. We haven't had deer in our yard this year. I guess we don't have like a ton of plants that they want to eat anyways because we're working on their landscape. But 
Um, they, ne they didn't eat the arborvitas at all this winter um, because they were wrapped up in the burlap. So um, either of these ways work for your shrub protectors. Um, using Utah natives and this, it's not necessarily gonna keep the deer out, but a lot of Utah natives are able to handle deer grazing really well um, because that's how they naturally are in the in the wild and it's actually really good for the Utah natives to have um, deers graze on them because it's like a natural pruning kind of technique um, and then also some of the Utah natives are like they either have like a really strong scent or something and the deers don't like plants that have a really strong scent so like your your sages honey or not honey your um your hummingbird mint um russian sage those type of things anything that has like that really strong scent or has a uh, fuzzy a lot of utah natives have kind of a fuzzy um foliage those will discourage the deer from eating those because they are unpalatable is the is the word that they use it's they don't like either how it tastes how it smells or like that it's pokey or fuzzy so yeah, so then unpalatable plants as well are your really smelly plants, your, um, any of your pines and spruces, junipers, anything that's really pokey, they don't love. So like, even like barberries or, um, rose bushes are kind of hard because they do like the roses, but they don't like the thorns. So it's like 50, 50 with the rose bushes, but anything that has like a really strong scent or is fuzzy or pokey, they will usually stay away from. Um, and then there's deer repellents. There's some that you can buy in stores, um, but then there's also a homemade deer repellent that I found on the USU extension page, um, which is just, you mix one egg with one quart of water in a blender, and then you wanna strain it to prevent it from clogging your sprayer, your spray bottle. And then you just apply it to any foliage around. Um, and if you think about like the egg in there and the smell that it's going to create, like probably not awesome for you to be smelling that, but also the deers will smell that and it'll discourage them from being in your yard. Um, and then also you want to reapply this. If you're really trying to keep those deers away, you want to reapply when new growth appears or after it's rained because the rain will wash off that repellent. Um, you, can add, you can add some of these things to that as well. So like hot pepper oil, Tabasco sauce, milk, cooking oil, or a few drops of dish soap. You want to be careful with the dish soap. I've seen it burn some plants, um, but like especially the hot pepper oil, if the deer still eat it with the hot pepper oil on it, they're not going to love that on their tongue. So again, these are deer repellents. It's not foolproof. It's not like it's going to work. Um, there's not like a 100% certainty that it'll work, but it, I mean, we, we have seen it work partly, or, I mean, they wouldn't be telling you that this is something that, that you can do. Right. Um, so that's one thing that you can do. Um, again, this, so this, uh, presentation is going to be able to be available on our website and things. So if you're not, if you haven't gotten all this information, you can definitely reference it later. And then avoiding bird feeders or keeping them like really high. So, I mean, deers won't jump to get onto a bird feeder, right? But they can stand on their hind legs, as you can see. Um, and the bird feeders with the, with the seed in there in them will encourage the deers to come in because it's, it's food, especially in the winter time. It's easy food for them to get. Um, and even like the wild turkeys will come to your yard as well for those. So keeping those bird heat feeders pretty high um, or just not having them. Some people, I mean, it's nice to have birds in your yards, like your little songbirds, right? Um, so if you wanna keep those in there, you just wanna make sure there's, those bird feeders are out of the reach of the deer and the, the turkeys as well. Um, there are some practices that people have tried implementing that don't really work. We'll go over those. Um, so, my parents actually tried this one with the, the CDs. It's supposed to be like reflecting and supposed to scare the deer off. It doesn't really work. My parents tried it with their raspberries with the birds. Didn't work. 
um, <laughs> the thing about most of these things is the deers get used to a lot of this stuff. And so it doesn't really discourage them anymore. They may get scared like the first couple of times, but then they're going to get used to that happening. So like I was reading that some people would put um, like wind chimes out and cans and things to make noise. And again, those might scare the deer once or twice, but then the deer will get used to it. They, they really, um, they're kind of skittish, but then they get pretty used to it. You've seen, I mean, like, for example, like cars on the road, deers will just literally stare at them as they drive by or drive into them, right? Like you'd think they'd be really scared of cars, but they're not. Um, another, some other things is the, the, Don, the Irish spring soap. I've seen this used in a lot of different landscapes. Um, the thing about this, it does, it does kind of work. It's the smell of the soap that keeps the deers away. But the thing with this is especially like after rainfall, you would have to put this out again. And then it has to be replaced like every week or so, just because the smell doesn't stay very long. Um, and so I've seen mixed results with the Irish spring soap. My mom claims that it, it helps, but Last year when we put it down, the deer still ate her tulips. So it's like, I don't really think it works. <laughs> um, also lawn ornaments is something that people have put out to try to repel the deer. Again, they'll get used to those. Um, they don't really, especially if they're not moving, it doesn't really do anything for them. Um, there's the last one there on the bottom right. It's like a light and noise maker that like screeches when the deers come by. Again, deers will get used to, to sounds and to lights. It's not really something that'll keep them away, especially like if you have something in your yard they really want. So, I mean, like even my family, we've gone out there and like yelled the deer or clapped our hands or chased after them and they still come back. So it's like any like thing that makes noise or anything doesn't really keep the, they don't really keep the deer away. Um, so next we're going to talk about just some deer resistant perennials that you can put in your yard um, to try to discourage the deer from eating your stuff and even like like right now with the tulips there's even some plants that you can kind of put around them to discourage the deer from eating them again discourage doesn't mean that they won't um, just because if they're hungry enough they'll they will work through a bad smell to get some food right um yeah let's well, first I'm gonna, so there's no questions right now, which is great. Um, so we'll keep going. Sweet. If it'll work, come on, there we go. So this one is lamb's ear. Um, this one is really awesome. I really like this one. We have this one in the garden. Um, works really well in our, in our zones. It doesn't get to be very high or wide. So it's a nice little mounding perennial. It has that silvery foliage, which usually tells you that it's kind of more on that fuzzy side and the leaves are really fuzzy and that's something that the deers do not like. They don't like eating that type of material. Um, so this is a perennial that you can put in your yard. Um, the deers won't usually eat and it looks really nice. Like right now our, our lamb's ear is starting to really um, bush out and it looks this good all year round um, pretty much. Like in the winter, it, it like goes dormant right um, but once you clean up the leaves it really starts to to green up really fast and then they do have these really unique blooms as well which have little purple flowers on them and they they kind of look like rockets i don't know i think they're really fun really unique um a nice thing about them is that they they're also like low to medium water so it's it's a great one for a low water landscape as well um next ones are cone flowers these have um really pokey seed heads. So the deers usually will stay away from these guys. They provide a lot of color to your landscape as well. Really long blooming. There's a ton of different varieties. These are just a few of my favorites. Um, they can get to be a little higher. So they're nice to add variety of height. Um, and then they are long blooming, like I said before. Uh, bloom color I have pink on there, but they also come in reds, yellows, even there's a green one, white, um, mixture of colors. And then these are also low to moderate water use. 
uh, Russian, sa Russian sage, sorry, I'm how to talk, um, is one that's a really good one. It's extremely pungent in smell. Um, and it also kind of has that fuzzy texture as well that they don't like. Um, Russian sage is actually really, really beautiful. It's, it's, it's really nice. I do like it. Um, and there are varieties that stay shorter. It can, there are varieties that can get pretty big, but there are a few that stay on the smaller side as well. Um, and then some people are worried about using Russian sage because they're worried about them spreading, which they do have a tendency to do that. But if you can cut them back every year, all the way to the ground, they're ones that you can, you can completely cut to the ground and they'll do just fine. So like I just finished cutting back all the Russian sage in the garden um, in the learning garden here, and they're going to do just fine. They'll, they'll pop up and they'll look beautiful. Um, and then if it starts spreading, it's not hard to like clean up the spread before it gets out of hand. Right. So I don't know. I really like Russian sage. It's really pretty. It's, it's a good color. Um, and it adds a different kind of texture to your landscape, but it's also has a really strong smell as well as, and that's why it keeps the it discourages the deer, I suppose. Um, sage is another one. So nice thing about sage is there are different different colors because you, I mean, the purple sage is one that's probably a little bit more well known. Um, but there's also one called pink profusion, which I've seen, which is really pretty. There's also a white one as well. I should have put that one on there is to show. Um, but there's there's a white variety also. Sage is really nice again because of the smell that it produces. Um, again, really nice looking perennial, um, full sun, water, low to medium. I really like sage. It's a good one to use. Uh, blanket flower is another one. Uh, this doesn't have any like specific strong scent or anything, but it is one that the deers tend to stay away from. I don't know if it's because of the seed heads or because the foliage is a little bit fuzzy. Um, but the deers don't usually go for this one. I haven't seen any like evidence of deer damage on any of these that I've seen in any landscapes that usually do have deer in them. So it is one that the deers tend to stay away from. They're really nice. They come in varieties of colors, a mixture of the yellow, orange, and red, or there's just orange, or there's just red, or there's just yellow. Um, these ones are really nice. I love this blanket flower. Um, again, low to medium water use, really good in our zone. Um, and there's a variety of heights as well with them, which is nice, depending on the variety. Um, yarrow is one that's really popular. Um, lots of people tend to stay away from yarrow because of the native um, variety, which does spread extremely horribly. It can become like a weed if you're using the native variety, but the more landscape use variety that they sell in the nurseries don't spread like that. And they're actually a really beautiful flower and they have really interesting um, foliage as well. And it is something that the deer stay away from because of the smell as well as the fuzzy texture of the foliage. Um, and then they have a few different varieties. This one is more particular. The moonshine is a, is a bright yellow, but there's also a red one, which is called paprika. Um, there's another like pinkish one. The name is escaping me. I can't remember, but there's like a pinkish variety as well. I know there's an orange one. I think that one's like terracotta is the name of that one. Um, I think there's a, a white variety that's not the native variety. Um, so you just wanna make sure that you're getting the right uh, variety of this. So just making sure that you, you're you reading the plant labels, right? That's something that's really important. Again, uh, low to medium water use. And then all of these are, have been ones that require full sun. I think I have a couple in here that do well in the shade as well. Yeah, so this one, the catmint is part shade. Um, this one is really awesome. It's one of my favorite perennials out there. Um, has these beautiful purple blooms. Um, deers tend to stay away from it because of the smell again, but this one's a little different than the Russian sage smell. It's a little sweeter. Um, I really like this plant. Um, long bloomer, kind of the lavender blue color, low to medium. It does well in part shade, which is really nice. Um, this one in particular, the Walker's Low variety is really nice. The 
you want to be careful with cat mint if you're trying to keep not only deer but also other animals out of your yard especially cats which is why it's called cat mint um the the species variety of the cat mint um will encourage cats to come to your yard because it kind of acts as like a catnip type of a thing they really like the smell of it you can actually if you have the species kind you can dry the the leaves and put it into cat toys and the cats will really love it um, but this walker's low doesn't encourage the cats as much so it's a good one to use if you're trying to keep not only deers out of your yard um, some deer resistant shrubs we'll go over next um, barberries are really awesome. Deers do tend to tend to stay away from these because of the thorns that you find on them. Um, and there's also a variety of of these guys. I, I love barberries because of the the brightness and color, the differences in color that you can find in them. So these are a few of my favorites here. Um, there is a variety of sizes that they, that they come in, which is awesome. Um, some of them stay tall and skinny. Some of them stay shorter and spread. Some of them kind of have more of like a mounded rounded shape. Um, they do have blooms, but they're usually really insignificant, usually either a pale yellow or a white. Um, but they're known more for their foliage and their brilliant colors. Um, full sun and then also dry to medium as well. Another one is holly. This one does get to be quite large, but it's because of those pokey leaves that the deers tend to stay away from them. Um, not only like eating pokey things will keep them away, but like pokey touching their skin. So like, this is a good one to use because it's a big shrub, right? And if the deers rub up against that, they're going to get poked. Like I've, uh, I've cut back some of these before and it's extremely uncomfortable. Not fun. <laughs> um, granted they do have fur, but like the pokies on those leaves got through my gloves. So I'm guessing it could get through fur as well. Um, but these ones are really beautiful. They do have that kind of more bluish hue to their foliage. Um, they have white blooms and then they get these really pure, pretty red berries um, in the fall that go into the winter. So you have a little bit what, a little bit of winter interest as well. These do well in part shade and then water on these is moderate. Um, other one is leatherleaf viburnum. This one deers don't like because of the fuzziness of the leaves and the stems have a little bit of fuzz on them as well. Um, these are really awesome. They have these beautiful white blooms, full sun to part shade with these guys. I've seen them do really well in shade as, as well. So like this is a great shade shrub. Um, you just want to make sure it's getting at least like four hours of sun, which is what part shade is. Um, water is medium with these guys. Um, and then these ones can get to be pretty large. So you do want to have like a good area for these. Um, especially this lovely viburnum. There's other viburnums, but they're not as like deer resistant type of shrubs. Um, I haven't seen deers eating viburnums, but it, I mean, it might be something that they want to eat if they're really hungry, you know? But the leather leaf really discouraged them from eating. This one, um, Lily of the Valley, is one that was on a list from the USU Extension. I don't quite know why it's one that the deers tend to stay away from. Um, I don't, I've only like learned about them last year at the nursery that I used to work at. So I don't know if like the blooms are really strongly scented or like I didn't think the leaves were fuzzy or anything, but it is one that the deers tend to stay away from and it's beautiful. It's one that's not as well known or used. So it's kind of new, getting new into the, the nursery, the nurseries. Um, really beautiful though. They have the new leaves that come out are that red color, which is awesome because it provides color and then they turn green as well. So it's just a, a really cool looking bush. Um, water is moderate on them. They do have those white blooms that come in the early spring. Um, and then the height is kind of variable. They are one that can be pruned back every year to stay a little bit smaller. 
um, but you don't want to like hack them to pieces. You just can kind of, you can control the, the height of these a little easier than others. Um, for Scythia, it, this is another one that I don't understand why the deers don't eat it, but because of the balloons aren't extremely smelly and there's no thorns on them, but maybe it's just because there's nothing interesting there for the deers to eat, right? It doesn't really taste good. It doesn't have any sort of um, benefit to the deer. So maybe they just tend to stay away from it, but it is one that was on the USU extension list. Um, really beautiful. This is the, the yellow bush that you're seeing around right now that's blooming. They're, they're lovely. I love forsythia and then they'd stay a nice green color. So they're a really good background plant because it's something that blooms really early while everything else is still starting to, to green up. And then it's just a nice background one for the rest of the year. Um, you do want to make sure that you're picking the variety that's going to work for your spot because they do vary so much in height and in spread. Um, there are ones that stay smaller. There's ones that get huge. There's ones that are medium. So just make sure you're checking the plant tags. Um, full sun to part shade with these guys. And then these are moderate water use. Boxwoods. Um, this is another one that I don't really understand why they don't eat. Um, they're not necessarily pokey. They're not necessarily like smelly, but it is one that they tend to stay away from. Um, this one is specific to, to green gem, but there are other varieties. Green gem is a really popular one just because it stays more in that kind of medium size, three to four feet, which a lot of people like. Um, they do get blooms that are not, you don't really ever see the blooms because these are more for their foliage. Um, they do pretty well in part shade as well as full sun. And then water is moderate on these guys. Um, Ah, here we go. There is a question that I'll answer right now. Um, so how much does having a large dog that does not live outside but runs around the yard often discourage deer from coming into the yard? Um, I mean, if the dog is chasing the deer off every time it goes outside, I mean, I guess it would help but I don't know how much it would discourage the deer from coming into the yard. If it's something that's like more present outside and the deers aren't like friends with the dog, because there are like, there are animals that actually get along pretty well with deer. Um, so I guess it just depends if that dog is consistently scaring away the deer or if he's barking really loud or he's chasing them. Like it would definitely, if he's out there enough I think it would discourage the deer, but I, I don't have any personal experience with that. Um, yeah, I hope that, I hope that answers that question. <laughs> um, next question is, will any of these shrubs or flowers help to keep the deer out of a vegetable garden? Um, so having these around your garden may discourage the deer from coming into your yard, but again, or into your garden, but again, like they'll eat anything or they'll go through anything if they're hungry enough, right? So, I mean, especially if you're in an area, like usually during the summer, the deers have enough food up in the mountains to kind of get them through the summer. Um, but I mean, there's been deers out in my parents' garden eating her raspberries in the summer. So sometimes they come down for things that they really like, you know? Um, so having these different types of plants around the garden may discourage the deer. And if you have most of these in your yard and this is what the deer like know that are in your yard, they may just stay away. Um, but it's kind of tricky with vegetable gardens just because there is a little bit more things in them that the deer will want to eat, right? Um, one thing that my dad uses to keep the, the I don't know, I don't know if it's keeping the deer out of the corn or more like the raccoons is an electric fence. It does keep them away. Um, and then the, I mean, the deers never have touched our corn, but I don't know if that's something that deers really like. The only thing that I've really seen the deers go after in our vegetable garden, um, we live in a valley that's in, in the mountains. So it's 
we have deer in our yard pretty often. And the only things that I've ever seen the deer go after are the raspberries and then the pumpkins. But usually we get the pumpkins cleared out early enough and we leave some out there on purpose so that they don't go for the ones on our porch. Um, so it can help to keep the deer out, but again, they'll go through anything to, if they're hungry enough, if they, if they need food. I hope that answered that question. Okay, so let's keep going. So this next one is the blue star juniper. Um, I did do, do a specific on this one as well, but any junipers will discourage deers. But this one's really nice because it does stay shorter um, and it's more of like a spreader type of a shrub. Really beautiful blue color, um, full sun, moderate water use. This one's a good one because of that pokiness and any junipers kind of have that pokiness in their leaves that if the deer were to eat that, not very comfortable. And if they were to like walk through that or brush up against it, it's gonna poke them. So this one is one that's good. Butterfly bush is one that they tend to stay away from. Um, this again is another one why I don't really know why because the butterfly bush doesn't have a really significant scent. The leaves I guess are a little bit fuzzy but it's not like enough that I would think a deer wouldn't eat it. But they do stay away from butterfly bush and butterfly bush is really nice because they do have a variety of heights and colors as well. Um, purples and pinks and whites are usually the, the color palette in these. Um, low to medium, I think with water is what I would put on these guys. Um, and then they do come in a variety of heights and colors as well. And then they bloom for a really long time. So they're, they're a great one to add. Catonia aster is one that they, that they stay away from. Um, I think it's probably just because the leaves are so small, there's not really any purpose to them eating this because it doesn't really have any benefit to them. Um, they do get these really cute little flowers in the, in the springtime, kind of late spring. Um, and then they get these really nice red berries in the, the fall and they stay in the winter, but which adds a lot of nice interest. Really like Catonia asters. Um, there's some that are more taller, like shrub. This one in particular stays shorter, but there's some that, that get a little bit taller in height um, and work more of a shrub than this one's more of like a ground cover. Um, but this one is, is nice. Um, and then I'm gonna go over some plants that you can avoid to keep deer out of your yard, which is hard because a lot of these plants are ones that people really like. Um, but if you keep the plants out of there that the deers love, which are like candy to them, then they tend to stay away a little bit better. So your arborvita trees, there are some arborvitaes that they, they don't go for, but usually the skinny variety is the one that they, they really, really like this variety a lot, like literally candy to them. Um, and the funny thing about this is that they, they can't reach all the way up at the top, right? So usually it's just eaten from the bottom to a spot. And so you can always tell the deers have eaten it. Um, so another one is roses. Um, deers don't tend to go for roses a ton, but like towards the end of the season when their plant material up in the mountains is, is gone away, they'll come down and they will eat the roses off of your rose bushes. Like my mom has been so upset sometimes because she'll, there'll be a nice pretty bloom and then the next day she'll go out and it'll have been like nipped right off the end which she's like, no, it was so pretty. <laughs> so I'm, but I haven't seen them be a huge problem with our roses. And we actually have quite a large rose garden, but especially cause they usually go for the roses in the, in our front porch area. Cause we have a couple of rose bushes like near the porch and the other roses are more in like our rose garden area. So it's kind of hard to walk around in without getting nabbed by a, a thorn so maybe that's why it's discouraging the deer from going in there because the only problem I've ever seen are the roses that are away from all the others so maybe just placing the roses in the correct spots um daylilies are ones that deers really they do tend to eat those ones they like them a lot um tulips you've seen the deers love tulips they're like another candy to them um which is hard because tulips are a beautiful plant to have in the springtime um but there are there are plants that you can, uh, other bulbs that you can put in place of them, not the same, but like your daffodils, hyacinths, alliums, they'll tend to stay away from those ones. Um, and sometimes if you mix 
the tulips with the other ones, the deers will kind of stay away, but tulips are something that they really like to eat. It's really hard to keep them away from, from the tulips because they can like move around the other stuff. Um, and then the bottom right picture is uh, an Eng a English yew or Japanese. Japanese yew, I think is what it's called. Um, Taxus is the botanical name. They do tend to go for the little berries on these guys, which is kind of funny because the berries are poisonous to humans, but they tend to like them. And I think they like the foliage as well. The foliage is really soft, really nice. Um, so these are plants to avoid putting in your yard to kind of help the deer stay away, which is hard because all of them are really pretty plants. Um, and there are some others as well, but these are just a few. Um, and then just remembering that there are other pests in your yard besides deer is something that I wanna point out. Cause I mean, you wanna make sure that you're trying your hardest to keep your landscape looking good, right? Um, but there's going to be other pests in your yard. So I have on here like rabbits, turkeys. The wild turkeys are actually something that's pretty popular where I'm, where I live. Um, we've seen them all over this year. They've been really, really um, growing in population, I think, in my town. Um, voles, little mice, they tend to eat the roots of plants and create holes through your grass and things. Even lawnmowers and children and dogs can be considered kind of pests to your landscape just because they can create damage to things. Lawnmowers, some people will accidentally scrape a tree, um, a new tree, and the tree will die because it got its bark scraped off to the point where it wasn't able to heal. Children will break off limbs. Um, dogs, like there was a lady where I used to work in Colorado. She came in needing a new um, landscape design and one of the things that we talked about was the fact that we couldn't put plants in this specific area because the dogs liked to go up to the fence and run around and bark and so we couldn't plant anything there because the dogs would just trample it to death um, but then also uh, dogs urinating on your plants and on your lawn it will kill them as well and it, especially if the dog is is urinating a lot and in the same spots, usually those areas will not do very well. Um, and then also like your other pests, like your um, insects as well can be a problem. So just remembering that there's other pests in the garden, not just deer. Um, and also just like, yes, there's deer in your yard and there are things that you can do to try to keep them out, but if you're creating a landscape that works with the deer, not so much as trying to like completely keep them out, you can still have a very beautiful landscape. Like the plants that we talked about are really pretty and there's a lot of them that do really well in, a different, in lots of different situations. And so you can still have a really nice landscape even if there's deer roaming around in your yard, right? And maybe they eat a couple pumpkins and maybe they, they graze on a bush or two, but if you have plants in there that either work with deer grazing or the deer will stay away from them, you can still have a very beautiful landscape. Um, and then these are just some, the USU extension is where I got a lot of my information for this presentation and that's the link to it. You can go and read there some more for more tips and things. Um, and this class was a little bit shorter this time. I, I did figure it to be not as long, um, but that's all I have. It looks like we have a couple of questions. Um, so there's asking, have you ever, have you had any experience with motion detecting sprinklers? Um, I haven't had any personal experience, but I do know that they don't tend to work extremely well. Like, again, they'll be like kind of the lights and the sound maker things. The deer won't, I mean, they'll maybe get scared away the first couple of times, but sprinklers are just like rain, right? So they'll get used to having water sprayed on them. I don't have any personal experience, but I have heard people that 
they're like, we got these special sprinkler things and the deer are still in our yard. So I've heard that they don't work super well um, for keeping deer out of your yard indefinitely. Um, are there any deer resistant perennial grasses? Yes, actually, sorry, I didn't put any of those in there, which I should have because most grasses actually deer will tend to stay away from, especially your ornamental ornamental grasses. Um, a lot of them are kind of pokey. They kind of have that weird um, kind of hard texture on the, the edges of the leaves. Um, so they do tend to stay away from, from those. So any perennial grasses usually will, will do pretty, pretty good against deer. I haven't seen any problem with deers eating or deer eating, um, ornamental grasses. So yes, I, I didn't put those in there, which I should have because the deer do tend to stay away from them. All right. Is there any other questions? That's all I have for this class. I hope it was helpful. I know that it's hard to work around deer in your yard, um, but there are ways to help repel them. But again, like, it's still gonna, just gonna be kind of hard to keep deer extremely 100% out of your yard. But there are things that you can do to, to prevent it and to work around it. 